linear motion problem four. It says, uh, consider the formula, delta x is v naught t plus one half at squared. Describe the meaning of each of the two terms on the right side of the formula. In other words, I want to know the meaning of the v naught t term. What does that term represent? And the one half at squared term, what is that term trying to tell you? Okay. Um, a hint that would have been nice is if I had mentioned, hey, you know how uh, delta x is gonna, a displacement that's going to be in meters? Therefore, v naught t is in meters, and 1 half at squared has to come out to be meters for the unit. In other words, these things, they're going to be measured in meters. They're going to be displacements. Okay, so what is this displacement, and what is this displacement? Okay, that's the way I'm going to think about it. All right, so um, the best way to think about it is actually the way that, if you remember, the way that we derive this formula in the first place, perhaps. Um, so here. Right. Uh, some blank paper would be helpful. All right. So here's the way I might think about this. You may recall that uh, when I'm talking about, mm -hmm, about this formula, mm, doo -doo 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 -doo, right? Um, Think about, consider this, um, this graph, a velocity versus time graph, all right? And perhaps uh, we have something that is accelerating with a nice constant acceleration, right? Okay, we know these formulas, the kinematics formulas that we learned were for constant accelerations only. Acceleration being, of course, the slope of a VT graph. So a nice constant acceleration means a constant slope, means it's a straight line. Perhaps we had a graph that was something like this. Nice linear plot, right? This value here would be V naught. This would be the final V, right? And, you know, here's the time. And uh, so you might recall displacement on a VT graph. Well, that's the area, right? So... I'm going to take the area between the line and the time axis, okay? And if I looked at that area, I might slice it up. And this is no surprise to folks who had honors physics. They recall that we took this and we said, hey, uh, take a look at this rectangle and then take a look at the triangle. And we would add them up to get the total area, which would be the total displacement, right? And so you'd say, okay, um, this area down here, I'm going to say the area is going to be width times height. And so that displacement, that's that, would be V naught times T. And you say, hey, look, that's the first term. All right. And then the second uh, area, this triangular area, well, it's going to be a triangle. So it'd be one half base times height. So it's one half. The base is T that duration, right, that time there. And the height then, you're like, oh, what's this height? Well, that's going from V naught to V. So that's V minus V naught. Now, that doesn't quite look like that. But if you recall that uh, V is AT plus V naught, which we had just derived from this in this experiment with uh, the buggy rolling, or the cart rolling down the ramp, uh, last year, remember, rearrange this, we could get that A is V minus V naught over T. So, uh, or better yet, rearrange, move the T to the other side. Uh, v minus V naught would be AT. Okay, that's really what I want to say is V minus V naught is AT. Here, let's, let's get rid of that. Right. I can rearrange this to get that. So this bit here in parentheses is just AT. So this would be one half T times A times T, or if you'd like, one half AT squared. And you say, aha, this triangle is the second term. This rectangle is this first term. Add them up, I get the total displacement. So I get that these are displacements, but, but like, what are their meanings? Well, let's... To, to kind of make that clear, let's do one more. Let's do another what if. Okay. Let's do another VT graph with a nice constant acceleration. But this time, let's say that our graph looked like this. 
right? And this is my final velocity. This is my initial velocity, right? Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same. Look. Look. This now, the red rectangle is V naught T, right? What would I get if I did one half uh, AT squared? That's one half T times V minus V naught. That'd be half T V minus V naught. That, that's like this bit here, right? You see what I'm saying? So I'm gonna subtract essentially this triangle off. This is that one half AT squared term, half of this height, right? Times time, right? You know what I mean? Um, squared. So the point is, because in this case, my acceleration is negative, I'm going to be subtracting this triangle off from the rectangle. Here where my acceleration is positive, I'm adding this triangle to the rectangle, essentially. What is the meanings of these things? Well, the rectangle part, that is what your displacement would have been if you had continued with that V naught the whole time. If I continued with that V naught for that whole time, that's how far I would have gone at a constant velocity. What's the orange part? It's the modification to my displacement, right? How much I have to add because or subtract because I'm accelerating with a positive or negative acceleration. So that's the meanings of the two terms, really. You say this first term is the displacement if we continued with the initial velocity that whole time. This term is like the modification to the displacement because we're accelerating. It's the modification to the displacement because of the acceleration. Okay, and so that's that's the significance of those two terms, right? If I have a case where my object isn't accelerating, acceleration is zero, this term would drop out. We just we wouldn't have this modification. We would just continue at that initial velocity the whole time, right? So this is the equation for constant velocity. You just drop this term. All right, that's it for problem four.